Alrighty. Thank you, Kirsty. Thank you, Kirsty. And we've got Kirsty with we've us. Got a guest. How amazing. It's so wonderful that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We're yeah. excited. It's, it's exciting for us actually to have you here. Um, now, so what are being thankful? So what are we being thankful for? Our pelvic floors. <laughs> well, actually, you. I could say a swear word. You really need to be thankful for your pelvic floor working well, don't you? Oh, you do. absolutely. Yeah. So how did you get into being interested in that, Kirsty? Um, I guess mainly through motherhood, yeah. Okay. I, um, I lost, uh, you know, before motherhood, people would always say, like, my core was really strong, and I never thought, felt that was quite accurate. Um, and then after motherhood, um, so... Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can have a baby via cesarean and you still, you know, even in carrying the baby, you can still have pressure on your pelvic floor muscles. But um, but I had a vaginal delivery and I also had an episiotomy. Um, and I think, you know, just a combination of the baby coming through and, um, you know, human intervention yeah. Um, yeah. just uh, had a, a significant effect on my pelvic floor muscles. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, yeah, but it does. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I think most women, even are just ageing, but I do know that having had two children as well myself, like jumping on the trampoline <laughs> <laughs> used to be something I could do. I still, I, and then it took a while to get it back again. Yeah. So you, the good news is you can get it back. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And, and not having had kids, I'm at the ageing end of things, and you know, really, I can't really. Well, I couldn't really pick up a skipping rope and skip with the kids at school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I'd been to the loo right then. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. I mean that's also the um you know with the estrogen um in the body, you know, you don't have that same kind of uh sort of tightness and stuff anymore. So um, that affects that affects mm. them as well. So. Yeah, yeah, you really have to work at it. Yeah. 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 Good old estrogen. Now Kirsty is um our Yoga to Transform Pelvic Floor Workshop uh, teacher. And we are really excited about bringing this workshop to the world because, like we've just said, it's such an important topic. Motherhood, ageing, and it's not even just a woman's topic either. No, no. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just, um, again, it, it can be it can be an emotional... Um, it has an emotion, you know, emotional kind of scarring can have an effect on your pelvic floor. Um, so that doesn't matter whether you're male or female, um, and and you know thinking more like in a male body um, as they get older, if they get sort of problems with their prostate and things like that, I mean that can still still have an effect. So, every, but also we're all standing upright most of the time, and so the gravitational pull is stronger and stronger. So just the fact that we're walking around upright, we're we're you know stressing our pelvic floor. You know, so on a even lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, so. there's a solution, isn't there? Yes. <laughs> That's why we can be thankful. Exactly, there's always a solution. <laughs> yeah, because I remember um, my grandmother had prolapse, so like you know the internal organs started like coming out, and actually, quite, I mean, I know some young women who've yeah. had that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that's from a, a dysregulated or a, 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 a poor pelvic floor yeah just d dysfunctional yeah. yeah so um yeah like you said the the organs start to um sort of drop down the openings and um yeah and then that can uh just yeah doesn't feel quite right no <laughs> it interferes with things functioning properly yeah yeah, yeah the ability for those openings to contract and close it just um gets harder and harder as well so mm. yeah. obviously prolapse is like um, an extreme sign and symptom that your pelvic floor is kind of um, not working so well. Yeah. And I remember going to a pelvic floor workshop <clears throat> many a few years ago, and they showed um, a video actually of what are they CrossFit, you know, in CrossFit competitions, like people yeah. all the time wet their pants when they like because they're pushing themselves so hard that like turning over those tires yeah, or jumping up so high oh okay it's like actually it's quite normal for crossfit people to um have destroyed their pelvic floor yeah. from working it too hard so what so that's obviously a sign as well if you're, <laughs> if you're wetting yourself or leaking yeah but what, what are some of the other things like because if you're sitting here and listening to us you you might not even know that there's a problem yeah um, let me think. So I guess any any sensation of um, like 
heaviness. Um, so that could be heaviness in the, with the bowel or heaviness with the bladder or a, sort of a heaviness in the, with the vagina. So, you, so that's when the, um, you know, those, those organs um, are dropping down. Um, so it's like a sense of dragging or um, heaviness. Um, other things could be um, just that feeling that oh I need to I need to go to the toilet but I'm not sure if I can last that long or that's a sign that perhaps there's weakness. Um, what else is a sign? Would be um, passing one. Oh yeah, you didn't yeah. Really mean to. Yeah, yeah. Sort of any. So sort of if you like standing up or sitting down or something and. Yeah. Yoga yeah. poses that happens quite often in yoga class, mm-hmm. doesn't mm-hmm. it? That yeah. people. Um, it happens with me sometimes, but luckily <laughs> mostly when I'm at home and the kids are like, Mom, I'm like, actually, I'm not farting. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, what are they called? I don't know, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are farting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that idea of like not being able to control, like, you know, um, to, to, to control like any sort of wind passing mm. or control. Like, or what about sneezing? You know? Yeah. Sneezing and then leaking. Leaking, yeah. 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 So and it's sort of that accidental yeah. um, losing control, isn't it, of being able to actually say, well, no, I'm not going, you know, I have yeah. control over my um, bladder and it's not going to, I'm not going to yeah. leak. But but it's not only in your bladder. It's also, um, my understanding is, it's, so there's the bladder, but also, too, it's the um, anus as well and the bowel function. So yeah. yeah, so it affects that too. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so the bow, the bowel drops down, um, then then it's so you've got you've got um, a muscle sort of if you've got like the basin floor and you've got a muscle and then there's like the, the sort of gaps in the in the um, in that muscle to allow um, you know allow sort of any you know yourself to go to the toilet. So whether that's passing like a, um, passing stools or urinating. And then, um, if those muscles get stretched, um, the 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 organs they drop down, and so then you don't have the same control of like you know if you you know you know you need to go to the toilet but you can't do you know if there's not a toilet nearby, um, you can normally like control it. But if if you've got dysfunction, then you can't control it, and then that puts like anxiety on you as well because <laughs> and that probably is no good for. Them. <laughs> For that either. Yeah. No. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And I've, I've heard stories of, and this is an older gentleman, like, um, who the anxiety becomes so much that they won't leave the house That's anymore. Right. They, mm-hmm. they, or even to drive for an hour, they don't think that they'll be able to hold on to go visit family. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So there's, but there's things that we can do to kind of prevent getting to that stage. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and, he's, and even kind of... If you do get to that stage, like I still think that if you were to do some exercise of those muscles, you could bring yourself into a better place. So um, it's not like it's sort of taking back control as well, isn't it? That actually, if you're working on it, that you've got a bit of mind control as well going on, as well as the actual physical changes you can initiate. Yeah. 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 Well, I definitely, I can jump on the trampoline now. Like, yeah. yeah, well, I can <laughs> like, definitely pick up a skipping yeah. rope and have a wee skip, and it's okay. Yeah, yeah. but like, you, you know, I can jump for longer than what I could when the kids were younger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so it does improve if you focus on it. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's you know, it's the same with any any muscle in our body. You know, if we if we don't kind of use it, it doesn't maintain its strength. Or so if you um, use those muscles, then you're gonna. Um, either keep the strength or make the strength make them stronger mm. Mm. so mm. yeah yeah mm. good and it's like, like the pelvic floor we've talked about this before in um other thankful thursdays is that the pelvic floor is the base of um the core structure yeah yeah, yeah. so you've got like your um kind of cylindrical core so you've got like your diaphragm and then you've got the um, sort of abdominal muscles, and then you've got your back muscles, and then the pelvic floor is that is the kind of base of that cylindrical core, and they all work. Um, you know, that it's all impo- it's important to have all of them kind of mm-hmm. working together, and, and a bit of strength in all of them. Um, so yeah, if you um, if one of them uh, kind of gets weaker, you're going to offset the offset mm-hmm. the um, balance of them all. So. You know, it's very important to kind of breathe. Um, like doing daily breathing practice is really good. Um, you know, keep your your 
core strength like strong and we're talking like the deeper deeper muscles and then like you know to do more kind of pelvic floor muscles as well so everything you're you're making everything and keeping everything healthy mm. yeah, yeah, mm. yeah yeah and we've just done um <laughs> such a good practice i loved it but we've just done the the practice from the workshop that you you offer us and man it's good um and, and in that you you um you describe how to do because I always thought um, when we were uh, toning the pelvic floor, it was just doing the old kegel exercise, right? Which is to you know, you know lift her up. Um, but I just loved how you did it. So do you want do you want to talk us through? Because it was really about engaging that deep internal um, transverse abdominis. Yes. Um, which again we've spoken about yeah. on Back More Thursday. Yeah, yeah. It keeps yeah. coming up that's, that muscle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the idea of of of. Um, pulling the hip bones together mm. yeah. yeah so your, your TVA is like the first um, layer of your abdominal muscles so we often you know you often see pictures of those kind of superficial muscles the ones on the outside and that so when um, I'm not sure if I mentioned here earlier but they're the ones that people would prod and said oh your core is really strong but I knew deep down that my core wasn't strong it never it felt just right the surface was yeah, it? yeah so the TVA is that is that um, is it is a really key one so to engage the pelvic floor muscles you want to almost think about so these pelvic bones are the ones that are in the front of your body you want to squeeze those in towards one another but at the same time you want to take the back passage towards the um, pubic bones so you're um, doing those like um, together mm -hmm. um, so you're squeezing the pelvic bones in and then thinking about a closing and lifting action with the back passage to the pubic bone and that kind of generates a lift mm. um, and you want to do that so that you can still breathe. You want to keep everything <laughs> like you don't want to be like tensing, so you can't breathe yeah. too much. Um, but that is basically the, the contraction of the pelvic floor muscles. So yeah, yeah, because yeah. that, that gives it the whole, the whole, um, the whole muscle rather than just a what you know the the tilt and the back passage to the um, pelvic. Pubic, pubic bone. Pubic bone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, it, is a common one. But I, for me, I, that was the first time in using that practice with you, was actually thinking about um, drawing in the, the hip bones there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and that's so the TVA is sometimes referred to as your corset muscles. And so it's bringing in that, um, that the engagement of the cylindrical core as well. You're oh, putting in those good. kind of you know, abdominal yeah. muscles as well, the deep bones. It's corset. 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 Muscles, yeah. Corset. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Pull it in tight. tight. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Who needs a corset when you've got a TVA? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, that's interesting because so much of that practice, like the um, lifting of the um, um, the vagina and the anus and kind of tucking under and drawing that belly back, uh, is about strengthening and tightening. Yeah. Um, but there's also the other side, which is people who have pelvic floor issues because they are too tight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's, that's that balance. Can, it's always about balance, yeah, isn't it? It is. Yeah. And yeah. it can also be quite common. And I'm yeah. sure there's other fields that that's um, common in, but you, it can be quite common in yoga because, um, so you'll hear a, a cue of engaging the mula bandra, which is the root lock. Yeah. And if you're engaging the root lock too much, you're actually restricting your body. Um, and, but also that tightness can come from like emotional uh, trauma as well so um, and it you know it could come from um, human intervention like if you've had um, you know you've got some scarring in there and you know um, so when I was quite young I had uh, well yeah I'm young compared to now but <laughs> <laughs> um, when I went for one of my smear tests I had uh, an adult a, a normal smear yeah. and um so they they actually went in and they lasered inside me mm. and and i remember like this like um sort of wellness lady at the time or just before she said oh like you know there might be another way and i didn't realize that she was saying to me like maybe seek uh you know a more gentle approach to it she said you know but I didn't know so I went in and they lasered everything and now like you know I would you know I mean maybe that is really good for some people but for me it feels like that was probably the wrong thing to do mm. um so that is like human intervention you know um so those so those sort of things can create like tightness and I know like you know some women like really young women as well can I've done workshops with them where they've come in and um, just 
just can't, you know they can't control um, leaking because their pelvic floor is so tight. Mm. You know, so there's nowhere else to go. They can't tighten any more to no, stop it. It's, no, if yeah. that's not tight enough, that's yeah. it. So yeah. with that, it's just a case of like spend time trying to feel your pelvic floor and like get some kind of softness back in there, so you feel like you've got some control. Um, yeah, I mean there can be all sorts of reasons why why it can get tight, but yeah, it is. So that's the idea of, of the breathing too, isn't it? So that you, it, we started our practice with some beautiful mm. <laughs> breathing practice to mm. to soften, I suppose. Yeah, it? to soften and relax. And I mean, that, and you don't, you know, you, you could just do that sitting in your chair like at lunchtime or something and just, uh, you know, kind of do like a, a belly breath so that you're, um, you know, a few times so you're feeling that movement of the diaphragm. And then as that softens, you'll then be able to feel how the, um, the, the the respiratory diaphragm mimics the pelvic floor diaphragm, and they they kind of work in harmony. Um, but if your pelvic floor is really tight or really loose, you won't feel that as much. So you're mm. trying to bring those those two in balance. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, that might be a good practice to do actually, because it was quite because um, it's not an area we spend a lot of time like bringing our awareness to. No, uh, which is it, for me, it's quite a shame really, because um, you know it's. There's a, there's a lot of shame in, mm. in the pelvic region. Um, you know, we make our um, pelvic parts of the body, male and female, you know, dirty, dirty places and mm. all of that stuff. So people unconsciously are carrying shame in that place mm -hmm. anyway. So we disconnect a little bit from it. And, and se you know, sex is an important part of the human experience. Mm. Um, so there's, like when you were saying about just feeling your pelvic diaphragm lifting and um, <laughs> rising and moving, it, I was like, oh, yeah, wow. Um, haven't done that before. <laughs> you know, yeah. Because when they talk about, you know, other, other um, pelvic floor workshops I've been to have been very scientific and, you know, uh, but not about actually connecting to that place and softening that place. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, the... Like for me personally, like getting into the muscles is is good at the time, but it's not something I retain on a daily basis. Mm. Whereas, whereas doing like something that I can feel is more kind of is more tangible. Like you know, um, mm. so yeah, you don't necessarily have to remember all those kind of technical terms. It's just like you know, what can you feel and and how can you make that feel better? Mm. Well, even the for me, just the idea of connecting the two diaphragms together is kind of uh, a revelation I suppose <laughs> yeah. yeah that really yeah. those two things should be moving yeah. together in a flow with your breath yes mm -hmm. whereas mm -hmm. you know we're sitting here kind of going breathing with our breath but it's really only this part isn't it often yeah we're not actually allowing that mm. that um well, we don't really breathe down all the way to you know we like we teach in yoga to breathe down all the way down to yeah. the belly um but in everyday life, you're right. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're not, but you see children, that like babies, they're like, Whoa, yeah, they're full belly breathing. Just breathing. And yeah. both yeah. respiratory, like, you know, the respiratory and the pelvic floor diaphragm moving in harmony. Yeah. And, and, and the, so the first part of the journey really is about learning to connect to just even being able to feel that. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's also a, um, a key thing to remember about the corset muscles. So, you know, if you think about how people used to put on their corsets and like tighten everything up, and yeah. and even now there's you know that you see like jeans and things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so you kind of you don't want to restrict. So as you breathe, like so the the diaphragm is dropped down, but the belly moves out, and so it creates space. So it creates space for the organs to come, um, you know, to move into that space and do what they need to do. And then as you breathe out, you the sort of the belly draws back in and the diaphragm to move back up so you don't want to be doing things like restricting that kind of movement by sucking in and mm. so um yeah it is important to kind of um do those full kind of belly breathing and then you know that that full belly breath and then um you'll and then you'll get more into feeling like what the pelvic floor is doing as well because it's kind of like a whole bowly thing really is, is the image I'm getting you know that we think about the diaphragm as being a, sort of like the bellows here but actually yeah. once you've got the idea of having your the, um, 
all the muscles around and everything, the corset muscles and the back muscles and your side muscles and everything, that actually you've got this big bowl that's actually doing the moving really, haven't you? And it's yeah. going out and in and up and down. Yeah. It's like a hydro- hydraulic pump, really, isn't it? <laughs> like, you know, like you, everything goes at the same time, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 And it's interesting you say, like, um, about how, because modern culture really does ask us to, well, do, it does a couple of things. It asks us to suck out. Mm. bellies in like really draw them in and then it also asks us to like squeeze out um you know get tight ass you know yeah. like really <laughs> like <laughs> but and it, i remember um when i was doing my body psychotherapy training one of the teachers saying if you're like holding your belly in and drawing it in all the time then you're actually cutting off your life force mm. and i yeah. was like, yeah. Well, I remember when I first started doing yoga, I really did, couldn't even breathe into my belly. I really yeah. was a chest breather yeah. completely. And so yeah. being able to actually draw the breath down beyond this little part here yeah. was a revelation, let alone in, you know, being a, a, a taller, rounder woman, letting your belly expand more was kind yeah. of quite opposite to what, you know, I felt I had to have been doing. So yeah. that was quite a lot of relearning for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think it's relearning for everyone. Yeah. Like even, yeah, yeah, like it's just massive, like in terms of, but I think this whole space for, for women, um, it's, it's, it's just so loaded, isn't it? <laughs> it really is a loaded part mm. of the body and, and doing, which is probably why the pelvic floor issues are so big now. And also I think it's loaded for men because men have the same issues yeah. as women, but, um, they, they've got a little bit more support because they've got one less hole in their <laughs> <whole> yeah. system. <laughs> this, um, Lucky men. <laughs> they just have theirs on the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a um, lady called Anna Dea Judith, and I'm not yes. sure if I'm saying her name correctly or not, but she talks about the pelvic floor as being the foundation of your temple. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, that's why you want to have that as a healthy, you know, a he- in a healthy state because... You know, if your foundation isn't in a healthy state, then you're, you know, how are you walking through life? You know, mm, so, yeah. um, so both yeah. physically and spiritually, mentally, whatever yeah, else, it's yeah, such a definitely. It's, you know, it, it's the place of empowerment as well. And you think of, you know, how many of us are trying to kind of empower ourselves with, you know, who we are and just, you know, standing in ourselves. Um, I think it's another really good reason to, um, you know, have a, a really good sort of pelvic floor practice because you're just you're helping to to be who you want to be and you know yeah yeah. and 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 that's another thing like you know um that whole root chakra and the legs and being grounded and connected to the earth and having the ability to really soften downwards while maintaining the lift um (laughs) so so much to think about um but you're like that's the essential first step Mm. before you can actually get into really like opening your heart or speaking your truth and all those other cliches that people have but really if if the foundation isn't there if you're not grounded and solid and and steady in yourself and your actual essence yeah Mm. Mm. and I mean that's like I mean if you take like the roots of a tree um you know if you think of how much and you know how much is kind of below below the earth and you know then and how kind of strong they are and that they just they move and they you know they flow with whatever comes at them most of the time yes. <laughs> stream, stream storms come up occasionally yeah. you know? <laughs> but um yeah you know if you just watch a tree like it is just it's so anchored and rooted and then it's you know it's able to express and grow and change with the seasons mm. um, yeah. yeah but the roots are solid and stable aren't they yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, lovely I like, like just how it, you said like it's able to express and grow and change with the seasons because like um, that's life. Yeah, yeah. You know, we are expressing and growing and changing with the seasons mm-hmm. of our own life. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this part of who we are, this deep internal like anchor, yeah, needs to be functioning really well. Totally. Yeah. And and alive. It needs yes. to be alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not just tucked away. I mean, yeah. I know we it's <laughs> <laughs> it is tucked away, but for ourselves as individuals, we need to be well with it and have a well um 
connected base. to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You need that base. Yeah. Right? Give a foundation. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so shall we do? Um, because I know that um, like there's a whole lot of exercises that we can do, and and they're all in the workshop. But um, I know that ultimately, and we've talked about this in Thankful <laughs> First Days as well, like modern living and posture. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And and heck, I think if we just um, focused on posture, like we'd be out of business. But <laughs> <laughs> there'd be no need for yoga to transform anything. But um. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not. But um, but it's just it's just it's just like the cornerstone of everything. Yeah. And but modern living really throws us out of alignment yeah. and and whacks our posture. Like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Um, Have, having like that's that's probably you know the one uh, sort of key thing you can do for yourself is like keeping your keeping your S shape in your spine. So mm. you know if you think about how we're, we're sitting um, at desks or we're driving a car, and then even like you know texting or you know the the mm. everyone's getting more and more kind of rounded and closing in. And when when we round the um, pelvic floor muscles and um, they're sort of pushed towards the front of the body so so just kind of like i mean we could do it so <laughs> yeah, sit, so sit, well shall i show you what like so this is rounding and the pelvic floors are pushing yeah, forward yeah, yeah. Okay. so everyone's getting that <laughs> there's other things just keep keep your thigh bones back <laughs> um so yeah so if you were to just sit on your chair and then take one hand to your inner thigh and then the other hand onto your glute. And you want to roll the inner thigh down, but at the same time pull that glute back. So we're pulling the um, pulling the muscles back and moving the thigh bones back. So we think back and sort of outwards. And then doing the same on the other side. So you feel balanced. Mm-hmm. And if you just do that, you'll f- can you feel like how yeah, wide it's broader. it is? But you, then you'll feel like your lumbar curve is kind of quite, um, you know, it's quite Pronounced, exaggerated. Yeah. It? So if you then take the tailbone, like the very base of your spine down a little bit, you'll feel feel kind of a lift up and yeah. you feel like a, st- a bit stronger in the core so mm. if we all sat you know I'm kind of a bit relaxed as well <laughs> if we all sat and did our computer work <laughs> and drove like this we just writing do, our books yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that really so, and then and then also mm. if you think like that anchoring and that um that space you've created there you then feed up into your heart you know and, and like your shoulders come back and your heart opens and it's easier to breathe and you feel more like connected to yourself and it just goes on you know like you feel clear in the head and you know every time I do it I feel that feels so much better and then I do my strength book after yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so true though isn't yeah. it so Me just too. once more so that's down on the inside so down on the inner side thighs, and, and then all so the sort of rotate down and back yeah. pull the sort of the muscle back the glutes back yeah and um, so you're moving the thigh bones into the back body yeah. and just you know, taking broad and broad so the sit bones. So you should be standing up. Oh, show yeah, us yeah, the, okay. the perfect. The, so the, so yeah. that's no. Yeah. That's thigh bones back. That's thigh bones back. And then wide in the sit bones. And, and then so you can draw. see there the pelvic. Uh, oh, the, look at yeah. that. Nice work. And you, like, you know when the thigh bones are a little bit too back and you haven't done your tailbone tuck because the, the, you're sitting forward, you're yeah. leaning forward, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the tailbone tuck. And you just, yeah. Oh, really noticed here mm. when you were doing that just how your shoulders just perfectly yeah. move to the right position just oh, the yeah. perfectly yeah. And your just heart lifts and that's right stand in your feet more but you weren't even thinking about that no. were you you were only thinking about making sure that you yeah. moved your thigh bones back and then just um grew, grew up your pelvic yeah mm. so i mean that's just yeah. a, a simple thing that everybody can do is just concentrate on having a good posture and then in your yoga like thigh bones back tailbone down it's you know just keep going back to that and you um yeah you're just working your pelvic floor muscles like strengthening them without doing the pelvic floor exercise so then you add the pelvic floor exercises on top and you're doing even oh. more for your pelvic floor muscles so yeah <laughs> your life will be transformed yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can like even in you know even in like how you feel like if you were to just stand, yeah. get that alignment, and then it just it just changes. Like you can feel it in your eyes. Like your eyes get clearer. It's just an instant kind of lift to your heart, you know. So, mm. it, absolutely, and it, and it's it's interesting in terms of um, uh, 
observing uh, the way people walk and, and mm. sit and all of that. And obviously, um, mm. we, we've got a little hobby, which is like yoga. So we actually, I pay more attention to how people are walking and all of that yeah. stuff as they go past. And, um, and, and just the way we seem to be really downcast. Mm. So you're right, like just that lifting up and the freeing of the back. My back feels so um, open and mm. spacious. Uh, it's actually then lifting your whole perspective and getting you from being downcast to wow, what is the I can see my future, you yes. know? And, and we're living um, with so much depression and anxiety and all these other problems mm. that heck, while you're fixing your pelvic floor, why not go oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. get a lift for the day? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah. literally a lift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And we can do this when you're dry. I know when um, I teach the inner spiral, um, I'm like, and this you can do while you're driving. Yeah. You know, like, and you're sitting, and I think cars really are um, terrible for our postures. Mm. Um, seats are as well. But y- if you do this when you're driving, then you're actually practicing yoga while, yeah. while driving, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 Isn't it? It's so easy to get That's there. right. And if you think back to what you're just saying, of course, you're going to be much more alert to be driving well anyway, yes. aren't you? Because you're going to have your head up and you're going to have your chest open and you're going to be looking to what's happening in front of you rather than driving yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a really, it's a really simple, um, as I often reflect on simple and easy, it's a really simple um, action to perform, but, you know, that it's not always easy, like, to keep going and, get, and to yeah. keep doing, and I think that's the more we, the more we do it, we bring it more into our unconscious um sort of habits and then um and then it does become easy you know so yeah. it's yeah. yeah 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 it's and that's why we call it a practice <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> like, yeah that's right i've been practicing this for over 20 years yes. now <laughs> that's right <laughs> still practicing yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> practice till, till the end exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and that goes back to the seasons of the tree and the seasons of life and what we go through you know so yeah. we, ch- we change and through the seasons and we practice according to those seasons as well you know so absolutely Mm. you know you know motherhood changed our practice Mm -hmm. and um aging aging's changing my practice your Mm. practice and um it's just a journey isn't it we just keep learning more about who we are and i think that's the gift of of the yoga practice is that we it's so focused on um your own self exploration and knowing yourself. Yeah, yeah. At, at this moment, yeah. it doesn't matter what you were or what you're going to be. It's just actually today, right here and now. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Perfect, whatever it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. Well, thank you so much, Kirsty. Mm-hmm. I've loved this conversation with you. Yeah, it's been outstanding. Just so much, um, so much knowledge I've gained and the confidence to. You know, have a feel around and, and do the, the simple things. Simple but not easy, is that what you were saying before? Yes. Simple but not easy <laughs> to remember, to practice the, those things that are just going to change, yeah, how I breathe and, and sit and, and feel into my body. Yeah. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste, <laughs> Namaste everybody. <laughs>